one of the nice things uh, about being a scientist who studies vision is be, uh, when I give a topic on it, a talk on it, almost everybody's interested in it because almost everybody can see. But what I really like to talk to, to what an audience like this is good to talk to is that uh, artists I find uh, are among non-scientists who are ones most interested in how vision works. So I think you can kind of think of my talk tonight as kind of an introduction to how vision works uh, from a scientist to say a non-scientist. And so, let's talk about, uh, I think, uh, what, what I want to do tonight is, uh, let's talk about how vision works. And, uh, yeah, vision involves your eye, that's for sure. But it doesn't occur in the eye, okay? Let me try to explain what I mean. Uh, let's talk about how the visual processes uh, in your body work. Of course, it starts in the eyes, and light comes in, and your eye forms an image of the world, a two-dimensional image, on your retina. Now, the photoreceptors, the rods and the cones of the back of your eye, they transform the light energy from the environment into a series of electrical impulses that are sent to your brain. The first thing that happens is there are nerve cells connecting your eye to uh, the, uh, the lateral geniculate nucleus there. So a tiny little P-shaped uh, thing in the middle of your brain, in that part of the brain called the thalamus. Uh, in the LGN, uh, and that includes, in fact, all the uh, visual information you can see is actually sent to that little T-shaped thing. Well, the cells that go there make connections, synapses, with other cells that go back here to an area called B1. And B1 is also known as your primary visual cortex, although well, most scientists serve, uh, we call it B1. Now, when I say that vision doesn't occur in the eye, what I mean is vision really does occur in your brain, or uh, beginning in B1. What I mean by that is your eye can be working perfectly, all, all the nerve cells going to LGN can be working perfectly, and all the nerve cells going back to B1 can be working absolutely perfectly. But if you have a stroke or an accident that destroys B1, the primary visual cortex here, you will report being blind. You won't uh, uh, see anything. So even if your eye works fine, if B1 is gone, then uh, you can't see anything. Now the importance of B1 is that it serves as the input to all the rest of the visual areas of your brain. And so it's not just B1 that participates in vision. The other shaded areas on the brain participate as well, but that's only a small part of the actual areas of your brain that are involved in vision. The best estimate we have is that cortex, the outer surface of your brain, the part of your brain that makes us human and distinguishes us from the other animals, approximately 60% of your cortex is devoted to vision. So more of your brain is devoted to vision than any other function. And so yeah, vision is actually a lot more complicated than people think it is in the end. And what we're going to talk about then is what goes on in these other parts of the brain uh, beyond the primary visual cortex. How do you actually see. What you'll see is the process of seeing. Uh, all these parts involved have to get input from you. But after that, there are a bunch of sub-programs throughout your brain located in different parts that do different things. And I'm going to talk about the big four things kind of, that your brain does with visual information tonight. Uh, the big four things, as I see it, are location, where things are located, motion, uh, color, and then I'm going to spend a lot of time on form. So I'm going to talk about those four things tonight. But I want you to realize that uh, we know more about vision than we do about any of your other senses. Uh, that is true, but there's also the most we don't know about vision uh, compared to the other senses. We really don't know what all the parts of your brain that uh, respond to vision actually do. So I'm going to tell you about uh, the most studied parts, and that's the ones that have been shaded or the ones that have been most studied. But there's still a lot to know. And we, let me explain what we don't know. The simple act of coming into this room, something a two-year-old could do, and saying, well, that's a computer there, uh, and that's a desk at the back of the room, and there's Nancy over there, and the desk is way further away from me than the computer. All of those things that I just did that a two-year-old could do, the most sophisticated computer vision system in the world is incapable of doing. We still don't know how all these parts of the brain are operating to produce the uh, sensations that we have. But we're going to talk today about what we do know. So my purpose of the talk today is to discuss uh, these different sub-programs. I'm going to tell you where...